live at the 2022 Chicago Auto Show and there is a lot to see. So I'm going to take you on a quick walk around of the entire show floor, try and answer questions as I see them pop up. Uh, so be sure, let, let me know. I may have to ask a couple times so that I see it pop up on my screen, but uh, let us know what you want to see here at the Chicago Auto Show. So we take a quick walk around of the entire show floor. So I'm going to flip my camera around here. And as you can see, we've got Toyota right here at the entrance. So we will start off at the Toyota booth. So first thing I see when I walk in the Toyota booth is the new 2022 Toyota GR86. I recently got to drive one of these with a six-speed manual transmission. So go check that video out on our channel. Long story short, I loved it. Uh, it's a fun, fast little uh, $30,000 sports car, rear wheel drive, manual transmission, tons of fun, and just a total blast out on the road. And then we have the Supras. So we've got many, many different options here, different prototypes with different aero kits and options on them. This one is from SEMA 2021 with the Targa top. We've got various different body kits and different things to see here on each of these Supras. Uh, so what is interesting to me is both of these sports cars that I've shown you so far from Toyota, uh, neither one is made by Toyota. So this Supra is made in partnership with BMW. And that GR86 is made in partnership with our friends over at Subaru. Then we get into the meat of the SUV lineup with the Toyota RAV4. They have it marked as the best selling SUV. And you can see all their other options and vehicles across the entire lineup back there. We've got the new Toyota Corolla Cross. And yes, we are in Chicago. And yes, they have a Chicago Cubs edition. And if that's not quite your flavor, there's your white socks. But the real story here at the Toyota booth, it's not the new Corolla Cross. It's not uh, the new Rumbus uh, mobility solution. It's over here at center stage, right back there in the back. That is the brand new for 22 capstone trim of the Tundra. Comes exclusively with 22 inch wheels, comes exclusively with the iForce Max uh, powertrain under the hood. We have a video where we talk with the head of Toyota Trucks at the Houston Auto Show. Go check that out. Here is the 1794 edition, very premium offering as well. And a little cutaway showing you exactly what to expect out of this iForce Max powertrain. So, if you are unaware, the iForce Max is a 3.5 liter twin turbo V6, and the Max part of it is a hybrid system. So, you can see the battery pack is stored underneath the rear seats. It is a nice compact size to do so. Uh, that allows for temperature regulation in the cab with you, uh, but very good system. We've tested it out. We've got some videos on the channel of that as well. And then the new for 2023, this is the Toyota Sequoia. This is also in the brand new for 2023 capstone trim. I'm actually going to come around here because they have one of the outgoing models of Sequoia right next to it. So you can see just a little bit of the difference between what they used to be and what they're going to now. So this is the new Sequoia for 23. It shares a platform and similar construction with the new Tundra. In fact, they are moving the production of this down south to the San Antonio, Texas plant that builds the Tundra. So it will be built alongside its full-size truck sibling and has a lot of the same features and capability, all the same trims, or as Toyota calls them, grades. Like I said, this is the new capstone. So 
Uh, we did have a short conversation down in Houston with the head of Toyota Trucks about this as well. Uh, so I will invite you to go check that one out if you're interested in more on the new 2023 Sequoia. I've got some other examples of Tundra around here. So we move in to the truck section of the Toyota booth. And yes, the all new TRD Pro Tundra. And this is the Inferno Orange, I believe is the correct name of this one. You can see it is gorgeous in this orange, in my opinion. Any cool to Tacoma trucks are just re-showing the same stuff. Well, we are eagerly awaiting the refresh of Tacoma. So it's practically the same offerings we have been seeing from uh, the Tacoma line. I will come back here. Uh, because you ask and show you the taco that they brought and put up with the others up here uh, Just showing their connection with the US Chamber of Commerce Foundation But yep, uh, nothing out of the ordinary nothing new or different with Tacoma just yet But I would anticipate something in the very near future So thank you for that question And we will Head back out uh, to yeah, uh, the main the alley and finish up with Toyota has a ride along for you to experience the new Tundra for yourself. Thanks to chip shortages and production issues, not everyone who wants a Tundra has even gotten to see one yet. So uh, this shows you we have many, many different trims of the Tundra out here you can see the different lighting options you can see this is a little bit lower grade than those full LED options over there that brown one does look like it's 1794 so you've got different ones to choose from and you can see there are different obstacles here for the Tundra to perform while you are riding along with an experienced driver for this closed course but very fun indoor test track for Tundra. And that about wraps it up for the Toyota booth. So I will show you the rest of what we got back here. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. It looks like four definite ride along vehicles, but we've got about eight Tundras back here in this exhibit showing you all the different capabilities and things that can be done. Fortunately, it doesn't look like you get to splash in the water, so that's all right. Moving back to the back corner, we have got the Stellantis booth, Dodge, Ram, Jeep, Alfa Romeo, Chrysler, all represented quite well. And yes, Ram has an indoor test track going here as well. They showed off in a previous video that we dropped for you live. There is a new exclusive first responders built to serve edition highlighting the firefighter branch of first responders. Uh, unfortunately, it looks to have disappeared. So if you want to learn more about that, check it out. We have a live video from that reveal here on our channel. We also have a, vi a video from the reveal of this Ignition Edition TRX. It was unveiled at the uh, State Fair of Texas and uh, we actually have a video from that event with Mike Koval, the CEO of Ram Trucks, uh, unveiling that in truck country down in Texas, our home state. And we've got that for you on the channel if you're interested in more. As I said, we are at Stellantis, so we do have Fiat, we do have Alfa Romeo. Uh, interesting, I have not seen the just unveiled Alfa Romeo Tonal. Uh, Mid-size, small, compact, I'm not quite sure. Uh, crossover, plug-in hybrid. So we've just got the two mainstays, both in quadrifolio trim. So we've got the Julia here and the Stelvio back in the back. And no new Tonal uh, plug-in hybrid yet. Then we've got the big boy Wagoneer, 
This one is actually, no, that one's Wagoneer. This one's Wagoneer as well. Okay, that one's Grand Wagoneer. See, I knew, I knew. They make it tricky. So if you're not familiar, we've got some videos on these. Wagoneer is set to compete with the likes of Tahoe Expedition, whereas the Grand Wagoneer is set to compete with Escalade and Navigator. They're the same platform, same body structure. There's no length or size difference. It's just the amount of features and amenities and luxury. The Grand Wagoneer is more grand by nature and is the nicer of the two and the pricier of the two, but you get so much when you step up to Grand Wagoneer. Jeep brought their standard fare for car shows, Camp Jeep, back here where you get to ride along. You've got Rubicon 392s powered by a 392 V8 on the track. You've got what looks like a Grand Cherokee going around the track as well. So all different opportunities to ride along in a Jeep back here at Camp Jeep. Moving over here, the new 2021 Grand Cherokee, I guess this one would be a 2022 Grand Cherokee L, three row, first ever three row Grand Cherokee that we've had for a year now. And then moving into the electrification realm of things, this is one I am very excited about. And this is the new two row Grand Cherokee, and this is in its 4xe Trailhawk trim. So this is powered by a two liter four cylinder paired to an electric motor that allows up to 30 miles, thereabouts 20 plus miles of all electric range for your daily commute. And then you can hop in the same rig and go on a long road trip and use gasoline powered in that two liter into her twin two liter turbo four under the hood works much like the wrangler 4 by e and i think is going to be a very compelling addition to the grand cherokee family it is a quite nice vehicle if i do say so myself i got to check out a non 4 by e version at the houston auto show if you're interested we have that video up on the channel as well Pivoting around here, we have the Chevrolet booth. And we've got lots of big rigs from Chevy. We've got the longest running nameplate in automotive history with the Suburban and different trams. We've got a Tahoe Z71. Uh, I actually took one of these out with my family to see what it is like living with this for a family of three. So if you're interested in that, uh, go check that video out on our channel 5.3 liter v8 under the hood uh, makes plenty of power is it's big uh, that, that was the story of our time with it we we traded up for the day of testing from a uh, our standard fare jeep cherokee to a full-size body on frame and yeah it's big but very nice inside we've got Malibu, a little spark here, but the real star of the Chevy booth is right around here, right around this corner, and yes, that is the new 2024 Chevy Silverado EV. It is a ground up, brand new platform for 2024. We will have, we don't currently, but we will have an interview up on our channel with the lead engineer from Chevrolet on this uh, platform. We talk about everything from nose to tail. We talk about the, uh, the range, the opportunities that being an EV afforded them when they were designing this brand new truck and all the benefits of electrification when it comes to full-size pickup so that video is coming very soon so be sure and stay tuned for that can't wait to get that one edited out and show you there's a lot to love uh, about this vehicle and there's a lot of controversy surrounding electric trucks would you buy one do you uh, does it fit your needs can you tow with it things like that so uh, it'll be fun chatting with the chief engineer from 
Chevrolet on that. Moving around, we've got the new 2022 Traverse. New design for 22. Kind of cleaned up the front ends a little bit, gave it a little bolder look, bolder stance, different taillights on the back. I will say, not getting a lot of love, but was released uh, as the start of the auto show came around. They freshened the Blazer for 2023. There's a lot of controversy around this vehicle because it does not resemble the vehicle that most people associate with the Blazer name. But you can see they cleaned up the front a little bit, a little bit cleaner styling. Uh, you get an updated larger infotainment screen inside of that one as well. New styling on the Equinox back there in blue. All kinds of fun stuff. Over here we have got the all new Chevy Corvette Z06. We actually got to sit in this exact Z06 at the LA Auto Show. So uh, if you want to check that out, that video is on our channel. But uh, we, we loved sitting in that one. Lots of orange on that one. Go check that video out. Uh, I, I may have just uh, fallen in love a little bit with it. Flat plane crank V8. Lots of power, lots of revs. Uh, very exciting vehicle from the Corvette team. Moving on from Chevrolet, we have Ford. And the big news at Ford centers around that family of vehicles. That's the Bronco. So there are plenty of Bronco and Bronco Sports here to check out. The new <laughs> 2022 uh, North American Truck of the Year, the Ford Maverick. Bronco actually won 2022 SUV of the Year. So these are here for you to check out and see. We've got the brand new Escape, redesigned for 2021. We have a video, a couple videos coming out. We had a plug-in hybrid version uh, that we got to test out for a week. So we've got that stuff coming out for you next week here on the channel. Uh, just dropped a video and a family review on the Explorer back there and how that worked for our, our small family of three. And then the performance version of the Mustang Mach-E. So we've got several videos on a, an all-wheel drive version of the Mach-E. Looking forward to possibly getting our hands on a GT version. So this has faster acceleration, more power to it. Uh, very exciting. You can tell it's just a little bit different by this faux grill up here. It doesn't have the quote-unquote Mustang mustache. Uh, so you've got a full faux grill, whereas this one over here is almost exactly like the one uh, we had to test for a week here. Same color, same trim it looks like and everything. And yes, it has the Mustang mustache. New Ford GT edition revealed here at the Chicago Auto Show. So this is the 2022 Ford GT Allen Man Heritage Edition. If you're a fan of the GT, as I know a lot of our fans are, because this won our Instagram GT Dream Car Bracket Challenge last year. It was defeated in the first round uh, in our inaugural 2020 GT Bracket Challenge by the C8 Corvette, uh, but it came back with a vengeance and won it all last year. So. Uh, nominations are still open for your favorite dream car on our Instagram. So go find us, instagram.com slash gtgaragetalk. Nominate your dream car before the end of the month, and we will start voting on dream cars in March on Instagram exclusively. So if you don't follow us over there, what, what are you doing? What are you thinking? And then a classic GT40 right here. Which is your favorite of the two? You can definitely see the heritage design language, but very different vehicles indeed. One's V8, one's twin turbo V6. One is much more aerodynamically uh, tuned and sculpted. Look at these flying buttresses here in the back. Uh, I think just the sculpting and everything about these Ford GTs are insane in all the right ways 
So kudos to the team over at Ford. Here is a trimmer addition on a Ford Ranger. So this platform underpins the very popular Ford Bronco. And we sampled one of these off-road. Uh, spoiler alert, we really liked it. And yes, of course, we have a video on our channel that you can go check out. One in this exact color, actually. And then, ooh, the big trimmer right here. F-250, the 6.7 power stroke under the hood. And then we talked Silverado EV. Can't talk Silverado EV without talking Ford F-150 Lightning. So this is Ford's answer to electrified full-size pickup trucks. And this is going to be hitting the roads very soon. So uh, basically Ford took a much different approach. They took their standard F-150 and they put some batteries underneath in between the frame rails and made an electric pickup and uh, removed the engine, which <laughs> I'm working the way around the front to show you its front trunk or its frunk. Uh, lots of weather tight storage up here. You can actually see there's some underfloor storage here that you can pull up and you can actually uh, arrange that in different ways with different dividers. Uh, another previous video on our channel it, from the LA Auto Show is this guy right here. Timberline edition of the 2022 Ford Expedition. And uh, slots just above the limited grade, limited trim, I do believe. You can see updated exterior styling and interior styling. Cleaned it up, modernized it. Definitely a lot more screen real estate in this one. But you can distinguish it from a non-Timberline by the badging, the wheels and tires, much more off-road ready and focused, and the orange accents all around. You've got orange up front, and orange outlining Expedition here on the tailgate. One thing that we did not discuss in our, whoops, I hit it twice. One thing we did not discuss in our video in LA was the functionality of this back here in the rear uh, allows you multiple different ways to uh, store and uh, keep stuff back here in the back under floor storage and very unique system back here uh, let's see fold down our rear seats well this one does not look to have the multifunctional rear uh, cargo management system but Power fold rear seats. You can see captain's chairs in the middle row there. So this is a slightly different version than the one we did see at the LA Auto Show. So my apologies for leading you astray on that one. And then the big news unveiled here today. Uh, this worn winch up front is actually what was used to unveil this new Everglades trim of the Ford Bronco. So we have a video from a live video from the press reveal of this and we will have a video coming soon uh, with some of the chief uh, people at Ford in the development of both this and the one right next to it uh, that we'll talk about in just a second. Uh, quick synopsis of what this is. It's a 22 model year exclusive. It's based on the black diamond trim with the Sasquatch package. What makes it special? The worn winch up front, which like I said, was used to unveil it. Uh, the unique wheels on this one. It's got increased water fording ability. So they've done some tweaks underneath to make sure it can go through nearly 37 inches of water fording. Has a snorkel up on the passenger side of the windshield over there. That is <laughs> by itself very modular and can be adjusted. Uh, standard roof rack on this one. And you can see uh, this one is in the new for 22 eruption green paint color, but there is a, an Everglades only option uh, called Desert Sand that I think looks amazing. Uh, if you like that kind of tan look, uh, you will like the Desert Sand. The only way to get one of these is to be an existing Bronco reservation holder. Uh, you can upgrade to one of these. 
Same can be said of what is right next to it. If you're an existing Bronco reservation holder, this is the biggest of the big, the baddest of the bad. This is the Raptor version. Special twin turbo V6 under the hood, projecting 400 horsepower, uh, 37 inch tall tires, nine inch wider track for all intents and purposes, uh, custom uh, front bumper, bash plates, skid plates, all the necessary stuff uh, to compete in events like King of the Hammers, uh, which Ford has been doing for many years now. This is uh, race tested technology put on the Bronco platform. And you can see those massively wider fender flares, functional vents up here. Let's see if I can, right there, those are functional heat extractors. And then you get some uh, interior goodies. You got a uh, tow haul goat mode. You get a Baja goat mode uh, for all the different things that you would want to do in your Bronco Raptor. This thing is big. It is massive. And they've got it propped up on these rocks just to show what this thing is like. Uh, we will walk around now, take a look at some of the other booths and things that you can do here at the Chicago Auto Show. If you're just joining us, we are at the 2022 Chicago Auto Show. Here is Tia Collier. Go check her out, DallasSingleMom.com and uh, get all your uh, news and modern family driver information from her. Let's see, you can do a ride along in a Bronco. They have several indoor test track here. Test things like your uh, articulation, which they're doing back there in the back. You can see we've got uh, different obstacles set up here for you to do, including the giant incline. So we're actually gonna watch this red Badlands model as it goes through some of the obstacles here on the course at the 22 Chicago Auto Show. We will just kind of follow follow along with them. Uh, looking to have a video from an in-vehicle perspective on this. We did do this last year here at the Chicago Auto Show, so we've got a video of that if you're interested. Uh, Bailey took me around in a two-door uh, Badlands model, but looking to uh, get a little more in-vehicle footage for you, showing exactly what it's like experiencing some of these. It looks m way more extreme out here than it actually feels in the vehicle, especially when you get here to this articulation. One thing she's gonna show off uh, as she gets over the second set of obstacles is you can actually disconnect the front stay bar or stabilizer bar under load. That is something, there it goes, that differentiates uh, Bronco from its competition, uh, that it is a hydraulically operated stabilizer bar that can be actuated under load and released under load. So we're actually gonna see that again from a different perspective here with the silver one. See, she doesn't have anyone riding with her. I hope she uh, still performs the trick here for us but she'll get it up on it. There we go, get the hind wheel up in the air. Get a little wheel time, and there, she disconnects that stabilizer bar, gives you a little bit better articulation. So, awesome uh, what these are capable of doing. And then here we have trail turn assist, which locks that rear inside tire and allows you to pivot on that rear inside tire. Uh, as you turn, reduces the turning radius by 40%. That is a massive amount of reduction to a turning radius. And so here we will see exactly what that looks like. Watch that inside rear tire, see how it's not moving. The ABS locks up that one by itself and allows the Bronco to pivot around that kind of dead leg, almost so to speak. And like I said, reduces that turning radius by 40%. You can see it doesn't, either way you turn, uh, so you can turn left or right, it just knows uh, when you turn the wheel all the way and give it a little bit of throttle that uh, you can lock it up and go. And then Bronco Mountain, let me tell you, that feels, that feels more dramatic inside because all you can see is sky as we're pointed up in the air like that. It is uh, quite a surreal 
if you have not uh, been in a vehicle going up and down like that. I believe it's like 26 degree incline, which uh, I like to joke, I've got a 15 degree incline driveway. It feels like that sometimes, uh, it's just going home. Now we've got, oh, shout out from Southern Ontario. Thanks for watching. So here we have these Subaru booth, and these are their two most off-road capable offerings. This is the Forester Wilderness and Outback Wilderness. Increased ground clearance, you've got 9.5 inches here uh, with a 2.5 liter. Uh, it's so easy to get these engines mixed up. I believe that one's got the 2.5 turbo, whereas this has got the 2.4 naturally aspirated. We have tested both of these more extensively so if you're interested in either of these, their capabilities off-road, uh, we have an off-road testing ground back in our home state of Texas where we have put both of these through their paces. Let me just tell you, I am in love with the Outback version. 9.5 inches of ground clearance is almost identical to something like a Toyota 4Runner TRD Pro, which rides like a truck, acts like a truck because it is a truck. Whereas this Outback Wilderness is a car that is much more composed and fun and light uh, and playful. It, it's a very fun vehicle. And starting at uh, mid thirties uh, for these platforms, they're very approachable options for uh, relatively cheap off-road fun. And yes, you get all of Subaru's safety built right in. And Let's take a step into the national parks. So Subaru is the largest corporate donator to the National Parks Foundation and their booth takes you into the national parks. And you can see here just the love of all things outdoors. Right back there, that is the Subaru Solterra, 2023 Subaru Solterra. It is the first EV from Subaru in a partnership with Toyota. So we've got a video of that from the LA Auto Show as well. Here is one on level ground. This is the Outback Wilderness on level ground. And you can see just what kind of uh, let's see here. Any idea about what's happening with all chip shortage and auto plants in Ontario? I do not. Uh, chip shortage is affecting most people, most manufacturers, and they are all finding different ways around it. I know General Motors is opting out of certain features, so thank you for that question. Uh, but that is about the extent of our knowledge. They opt out of certain features for the 22 model year and uh, will alert you if there are missing features like heated steering wheel, uh, fuel management systems, things of the like. So thank you for that question. Uh, finishing up here with the Subaru Outback Wilderness. Again, I said 9.5 inches of ground clearance, as you can see here, uh, is a mass massive amount for what is a car, essentially. So very fun vehicle here, the new Subaru WRX. Well, I thank you for chiming in. Steven, thank you very much. Here is the Subaru WRX rally inspired, uh, fun little boxer engine. And looking forward to sampling one of these very soon. I uh, don't have too much to say on this one. Don't have the spec sheets in front of me. I, I do apologize for that. Moving around, you can see the rally heritage right there. Wintrust is a big sponsor of the Chicago Auto Show and they bring the very expensive cars to show off. So you've got Rolls Royces, you've got Lamborghinis, you've got Bentleys, uh, you've got what else do we have back here? All kinds of very expensive premium vehicles. Kia booth, Kia EV6, the all-electric new entry into Kind of a odd space it's uh, very similar to a small crossover suv uh, very deceptive how large it really is um, but set to compete with the mach e very similar in proportions here's one i'm very excited about this is the ev9 concept first revealed 
in LA. I really hope they bring something like this into production. I like it a whole lot. Very boxy styling, which is very in right now. And back here on the stage, you can see the new Kia Sportage. They've released a plug-in hybrid variant. So you can see styling very reminiscent of what we just saw on the EV6. And uh, just the new corporate design of the Kia brand. So very curious as to what you think of the corporate design as Kia kind of changes things up a little bit. You can see even back here in the back resembles the EV6 and the taillights, kind of that rounded sculpted look. Because let's see, there's EV6, there's a new Sportage. Yeah, the Honda Element, that, that is a very good, very boxy rig as well. Uh, here's one, almost exactly like one we have tested uh, on our channel. This is the 2022 Kia Forte. This one is a GT. It is set to compete with the likes of Honda Civic Si. This one has the dual clutch transmission, much like the one we have already tested on our channel. Very uh, fun, capable little vehicle that will give the Honda Civic Si a run for its money. So uh, if you haven't checked that video out, please do. That is one of our best performing uh, reviews as of late. Very excited about that vehicle. Uh, for 26, 27,000, I was impressed with it all the way around. Not a, a, not a bad option if you're shopping the compact uh, sedan segment. Up here we've got the new, first time I'm seeing it, uh, Sierra. This is 2022 Sierra with all new styling. Got Alex on autos doing his thing. So learning from the best here. <laughs> and we'll let him get back to work. And we've got the new Hummer EV. So this is the first time I've seen the Hummer EV in person. I will let them get back to what they're doing, but you can check out like I said, the Chevy Silverado EV shares a lot of components with this. We did speak with the lead engineer for Silverado EV. A lot of similar components in this Hummer EV. But you should see these on the road first uh, because it is the first full-size pickup truck from General Motors in the all-electric space. And you've got some stuff here from Buick, the GMC Yukon AT4, and we've got, again, another all-new Sierra uh, here as well. New styling, new premium interior, really stepping up their game. General Motors for a while have been lament lamented for having a downgraded interior, whereas this one really brings it when it comes to the interior game. You can see this one's got the kicker sound system back in the multi-pearl tailgate. We've got contrasting piping on the seats, real wood trim uh, with etching of, I can't remember what they said it was. Uh, but you've got elevation etching in the wood trim there on the, the new Sierra. Let's see what we've got over here. I'm sorry that your auto show has been canceled. Uh, this is the first time Chicago has been at full force. Uh, and this is my first opportunity to see the uh, Chicago auto show in full force. Um, LA was kind of a muted version from what it has been in the past, but uh, nice to see auto shows in person in the flesh again. Uh, of course, we're following safety protocols and all that good stuff but I do apologize that that Canadian auto show was canceled for you we've got BMW here panning around the Lexus booth the new Lexus LX 600 this is for all intents and purposes America's Land Cruiser so the Land Cruiser has been dis 
discontinued for the American market. If you want it, you can get this. You could get the Sequoia built off of the new Tundra platform. Learning a lot from Tundra, uh, but this is, for all intents and purposes, the next gen land cruiser for the States. This one is an F Sport trim, which comes with this blacked out mesh grill. A lot going on with this one. And you can see two plus three. So five seating in this one, two here in the back. So seating for seven in that particular one. We've got a couple RXs. We've got the new NX for 2023. GX, UX, many different vehicles from Lexus. And then I've been waiting to see this one. This is a new exterior color being shown on the Z. Previously, we've seen the yellow, we've seen the searing blue. Now this is our first chance to get to see this gray. It's kind of a flat gray here in person with contrasting red interior, red and black interior. So looking to get an interview, maybe some time inside, checking this one out later while we're here at the show. But quick synopsis, around 40,000 officially confirmed by Nissan. Starting price, which is a steal, uh, because all 2023 Nissan Zs will come with the twin turbo 400 horsepower V6. Uh, manual transmission is standard. Nine speed auto is optional. And yeah, let's take a look here at the red and black interior on this. So down at the Houston Auto Show, we saw a blue one with a blue interior. There were a lot of comments about how that blue would wear over time. Here is your red and black option. Let me know down below what you think. You see six speed manual, it's the way I would have it. We are looking forward to maybe, possibly, hopefully, fingers crossed, don't want to jinx anything, getting some track time in one of these very soon. So, uh, you know, I hate to ask, but uh, subscribe so you don't miss that one. We've got the concepts we showed you last night. There's Project Hardbody, the red one. We've got the Rebel uh, Rally Frontier here. Standard, <laughs> standard grade, normal consumer grade Pro 4X right here. Project 72X right here. Really love those white steelies. Apparently y'all do as well. And then the Project Adventure, the overlanding rig with the rooftop tent, all kinds of good stuff. This was my favorite from the Nissan event last night uh, that they showed these three concept off. concepts off. See the states are state map is represented on the side of this truck and the rooftop tent it is a very aggressively styled five inch lift bigger taller tires very awesome rig we've got pathfinder we've got lincoln over there showing the updates to their 2022 model line we've got uh, volkswagen up here they're not in one shot we've got the id4 Atlas, Taos, various different options from VW. Well, I have done as quick a job as I could do walking around as much of the show floor here at the 2022 Chicago Auto Show, trying to show you all that there is to see and behold here at the Chicago Auto Show. Uh, I feel like there's so much more I haven't gotten to. This has been a rather long video, uh, but there is a lot to see and be seen here. This is America's largest auto show, and I definitely feel it from walking around and checking everything out. Again, indoor test track here for, you don't have to take my word for things, you can actually do a ride along. So, yeah, I'm Corey signing off from the 2022 Chicago Auto Show. Thank you so much for following along, for walking along with us, exploring it all. If you are anywhere near the Chicagoland area for the next few days, this auto show will be going on. More information can be found 
online, chicagoautoshow.com, I believe is the website. Thank you so much. And until next time, bye gearheads.